Hi, everyone. Welcome to our next session. I have Inga Ruba here, uh, CEO from Bot Labs, and he's going to be talking about Polymic. I'll let you take it from here, Ingo. Thank you very much. So, yeah, hello. Um, as you might know, I'm I'm the guy behind Kilt Protocol, but I'm not going to talk about Kilt Protocol today. I'm going to talk about a small side project of ours, which we started a couple of months ago. And uh, I think that could be interesting for the developers community, but uh, also for some people around it using a substrate. Uh, not only because it uses very cool features of the substrate uh, and uh, might be useful for the uh, ecosystem of um, of Polkadot. Uh, so why on the on earth did we decide to build Polymac, a Polkadot liquidity mechanism? Well, our main product, the Kilt pro, uh, Kilt protocol, the mainnet is going to go live in 2027, uh, 2028, 2021, somewhere in summer. Um, and uh, we noticed that we need the Kilt coins uh, to be transferable a little bit earlier, uh, because as some other projects as well, you might know, we need some funding, and then you start selling some of your coins off, and then uh, people come and say, hey, can we have them transferable? Uh, maybe, hopefully, uh, in half a year or so, and then we say, yeah, uh, of course, we could actually do that, uh, even though the mainnet is not live, and then, where you go is normally do an ESC20 token. But we thought actually that doesn't really feel good for us uh, because we are here to build the Polkadot ecosystem, which is basically somehow the next generation uh, after um, Ethereum. And then the first time uh, we have a problem, we use Ethereum again. So we said, okay, actually there must be an equivalent uh, to ESC20 in the Polkadot universe. And we found, of course, that was missing, right? Um, and then we talked about it a little bit and thought about it a little bit. And then we found that uh, with the technology we have in our hand now, we can actually do something which is much better than an ESC20 by still being uh, very close to the functionality uh, of ESC20. So, uh, and then we scribbled that down a little bit. And then what came out was actually that we could build something that was not only useful for us, but also very useful for the community and which would help many other projects as well. Uh, so we started discussing if we can basically do this as a community action. And we talked to the Web3 Foundation uh, and uh, they said, well, this is actually quite a good idea. Uh, let's do that. And then we already also get a grant for it. So what is it? Um, basically looks like that. Uh, in the middle, you have the Polymac transfer system, which is basically a substrate based blockchain inside the Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, it is a little bit, yeah, it has one speciality, which is it can hold balances of not only one currency, but of many, many, many currencies. So basically, if you have one address in Polymac, you can have multiple hundreds, thousands, whatever uh, currency behind that. And the only thing that this thing do can do is actually that it can transfer balances from one um, uh, transfer, uh, transfer funds from one balance to another. So th this is pretty simple functionality, but it can be extremely useful for, uh, for example, if you uh, want to issue a pre-coin uh, before your coin actually is ready. So um, why do we think this makes it better uh, than the ERC-20? ERC-20, as you know, um, always required ETH gas when you transferred a coin. So if you take a uh, ERC-20-based tether and transfer it to your friend, you always have to attach some ETH so it, uh, that it really gets transported. This is why you have to pay for the smart contract, basically. Uh, we changed that and made it like in Polymac, the gas is paid in the currency, which is actually transferred. So if we put KILT on Polymac, then when I send you a KILT coin, you will pay, uh, I will pay the gas for that transaction in KILT actually, uh, which makes it much, much easier because you only need one currency transfer, to transfer one currency. The other problem that we saw with ERC-20 is that ERC-20 was not curated at all, which means um, that uh, a lot of coins of projects which were probably not so promising also launched on ERC-20, which made it very, very hard for people who bought, who bought the tokens to really find out uh, if that was a valuable token or not. And a lot of things happened that um, damaged the crypto community as a whole probably, and we don't want that. So uh, we have a curation mechanism in here. And we do this, of course, as a community of issuers. 
Then third thing, uh, the ERC20 uh, tokens were actually basically specul uh, speculative. So if you uh, issue a coin which has no utility at all, the only utility it has that it is maybe scarce and that uh, people may hoard it or hodl it and others may pay more for it later. So we also brought a little bit of utility to the coins which are on Polymac. And the fourth thing, uh, if you ever made such a migration, it is hard when you have your uh, uh, your uh, pre-coin on your ESC20 chain and then want to migrate to mainnet, then you actually, especially for the users, you guess, and get in a very unfortunate process, actually, you have to, uh, users have to uh, ask for their coins somehow and have to make sure that they are the real ones. And then you have to uh, make probably a big uh, Genesis block out of that. And that's and that, that can be faulty. Um, and um, some people were probably using their coins and, and their investments in there. And that also makes people unhappy and it also puts a lot of burden on the project, uh, which we don't want. And we think we can, uh, by using uh, substrate, also prevent that. But let's go from the beginning. Let's first, first talk about the gas. So um, what we have here, this is the simple balance, uh, the simple example. You have one balance A with 1,000 coins. And to transfer 100 to Mr. B, and then uh, the collators yeah, the collators uh, in that uh, in, in the Polymac chain get the gas, which is in that case 0 0.01 of the pre-coins, and your balance A then is 899.99. So the gas is paid like this. How do we do that? Uh, we do it by having the pre-coin balances not in a smart contract, but we have them directly in the runtime of the Polymac blockchain. So we can make it possible that the Polymac gas fees uh, are actually paid in the pre-currency, which is transferred. But that also leads to the interesting point that Polymac does not have a native token. It is possible to, to build a blockchain which doesn't even have its own native token. So, uh, but that also means that the maintainers of the network are rewarded in pre-currencies only. And this makes it first pretty unattractive to be a maintainer there, because in a normal blockchain, you get the gas, and then you get the block rewards. And if you don't have a native token, you probably won't get a block reward, because that's not possible, right? So uh, this, this is actually a problem, but we thought we make this problem actually a pro and uh, solve the next problem with it. The next problem was the curation. So um, basically, in a permissionless blockchain, everyone can be a validator or a collator or a miner or whatever you call it. Uh, Polymac is maintained democratically only by the issuers of the new pre-currencies, which means if you want to have a say in that uh, Polymac thing, you also have to issue a currency. Uh, that sounds not very fair, but uh, in the end, what it will lead to is that we have a community of the issuers. And this is quite valuable because each, each of the issuers will earn gas. And by earning gas, they will also hold currency of each other projects, of each of the, of the other projects, which means that, yeah, that they have skin in the game of every other project, which is pretty cool, actually, because they will bring the ecosystem really forward. And uh, the issuers, we have them highly incentivized to run the system properly, even though they don't, they just get the gas. They are very highly incentive, incentivized uh, to do a good job because their own currency depends on it. So if I'm a, uh, an, an issuer or, and also a collator in Polymac and I have my killed coins on there, I will really take care that this thing works because all my killed coins are on there. If this thing fails, my whole project fails. So, uh, so I think this is the best incentive you can actually have. So how do we make the curation now? <clears throat> We, have, we will have the issuers to pay a significant registration fee, um, which is for A, uh, to avoid spamming, so not have 1,500 people every day applying for a slot there. Uh, but uh, we will also use this registration fee, 100% of the registration fee, actually to pay for the parachain slot, because we want um, um, Polymac to be a parachain. So we collect the, the, uh, the money, uh, basically. So I'm going to explain that later. Um, so, and the exist so when somebody paid uh, their, uh, their registration fee, then the existing users uh, vote on the acceptance of new issuers. And if there's only a small number of issuers already inside the system, 
then those people will actually be incentivized not to let a new issuer in because they have to share all their gas, their income with the new one and they will get less. But if this project which comes in is actually pretty um, positive and uh, viewed positive and uh, is promising, and then they will probably want to earn the new gas from this new project and they will let them in. And this way, we keep the list of currencies pretty clean, not absolutely clean, possibly, but pretty clean, uh, so that only um, good projects uh, or promising projects actually come in here. So, um, how does the token economy actually work? This is pretty interesting, I would say. So let's start with the funders. You know, I, I said we uh, we want to be a parachain. So the first thing that you actually need is people to fund the parachain, right? So uh, we have three funders here in this case, uh, and those funders, uh, well, Polymac is of course using the crowdfunding model module, uh, put in funds uh, for the relay chain. Say they put in 100 together. This one, the first one puts in 50, this and this one puts in 30, and this one puts in 20. So we have 100, and 100 is, of course, enough to, uh, to get a relay chain slot. So we have our relay chain here now. Um, and then what happens is uh, that uh, a new issue comes in, the new issue pays registration fee, and this registration fee, which is supposed to be like 2% of the amount that we paid for the relay chain, actually, of paid for the relay chain slot, um, um, uh, for, for the parachain slot, sorry. Uh, th and this is then automatically distributed by Polymac to the founders so that they have uh, income already when uh, st still at a time when the, uh, when the uh, slot is running. And of course, after the slot has run out, um, 80 to 90 percent, they say, are refunded to the funders through the crowdfunding module again. So th this is how the whole thing is op operated and how it gets the truth uh, from the relay chain. So how's gas distributed? So um, we have a couple of holders down here. We have the holder one. Uh, holder one uh, has uh, uh, has only coin A, so he trades maybe with coin uh, with holder two, and then he also holds coin A, and he pays some gas for that. Uh, that is actually deducted by the Polymac chain and then issued to the next collator who run uh, who wins the next block. So that's actually a pretty straightforward thing, and uh, pretty easy to use. Um, so. Um, I was talking about utility. Which kind of utility can we actually bring in? What we can do is that we have the people who already have the pre-coins to give them a chance to bond them. So let's say, just as an example, we uh, uh, we give them uh, a 12 percent reward per year uh, if they bond their coins. So I have 100 coins uh, or 1,000 coins here as holder A, and I put 100 into a bond for one month, uh, then I receive a, another coin. Um, so I have 101 after a month, the 100 are released, and uh, the, treasure, uh, the, the reward for that was one because it was 12% per year. Uh, those treasuries are set up actually by the issuer. So we have the issuers here. They take some of their money, which they minted, uh, and put this into the treasury. And the treasury looks, uh, the, and the polymac looks at uh, how much is bonded of that uh, coin by which uh, user or by which holder, and then automatically pays from the treasury the rewards to the holder. So we have some kind of a, a utility already uh, uh, while the um, uh, while the coin is not on mainnet and that can also be used. Uh, so the fourth part was uh, why is the migration so much easier? So migration is so much easier actually uh, because we all have the same address format. If you have uh, a, um, a substrate based blockchain, uh, then you have a specific address format and if you do your main chain on that um, address format, then it will be the same that it is uh, from the Polymac because it's also, also substrate based. So what we can actually do as an issuer at one certain point of time when, my, when the main chain is actually ready, what we can do is we can freeze all the balances or uh, and I'll stop, um, I'll stop um, freeze balances and, and uh, stop the transfers. And then we take all those, um, um, all those um, balances and move them over to the main net. And then we just have to tell the user that he please connects to a new blockchain. And then when he connects to the new blockchain, 
then he sees this old, old balance. He doesn't even have to change the public-private key pair, so he can use the old wallet again. So I think this is uh, pretty practical and pretty straightforward as well. Um, so what are we going to do? Small outlook. So first of all, well, now the idea is there. We started developing for that. We got the, uh, we got a little grant from the Web3 Foundation. Uh, I think all the big problems are actually solved from the uh, tech side. Uh, so we are pretty sure that we can actually do that. Um, in the next couple of months, of course, some we have some external dependencies. Uh, XCMP has to has to work uh, and stuff uh, like that uh, for, uh, for for building that. But uh, we are pretty sure that uh, it's going to happen. So we can actually start with the crowdfunding for the poly uh, polymer power chains. Um, of course, we will have to have some exchanges to connect to Polymac and uh, to potentially, well, that's really potentially list all coins deployed there. That would be pretty cool because that would be really attractive for the projects to come in and uh, deploy their coins there. Um, of course, we will deploy Kilt and maybe some others we are talking with uh, with the first version, which will hopefully be beginning of next year, actually. Um, and then together with the guys from Moonbeam, we're working uh, on building a smart contract system to that so that it can also, so the system, like I described it, is pretty stupid, right? It can just fund, do fund transfers. And uh, if we want to have it a little bit more uh, shiny, then we definitely need some uh, things to allow complex ICOs, to allow airdrops and all that stuff. Uh, and that uh, will be built uh, with a smart contract system around that and we, are in talks with the guys from Moonbeam, and it looks like we're going for a cooperation there. Um, it is also possible, we think, to uh, have non-substrate-based coins to use the infrastructure, because it is just a very practical infrastructure. And why shouldn't we put something like Tether on Polymac? What would be good for the world, because right now Tether is mostly a little bit dependent on uh, the gas price, and it doesn't really, it's a lot, it isn't really a lot of fun to uh, pay two Tethers and uh, uh, pay one tether on top of that for gas, uh, and we could change that by that way. Um, and of course, we're also talking about uh, issuing uh, security tokens on top of uh, Polymac. So we have, we are in talks with some projects which are already uh, interested in that. So that's also an option. So yeah, that was basically a short uh, view into Polymac. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, please join the Q&A later on, on the Discord channel or just reach out to me. I'm ingo at kilt.io. Pretty easy to remember. Um, yeah, this was basically it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Ingo. That was a great overview. Um, we'll move into our next session. As mentioned, you could by Ingo, you can join him on Discord. Um, there's no questions at the moment here, but if you want to further discuss uh, Polymic with Ingo, uh, go ahead to Discord and meet him there. All right, thank you, Ingo. We'll move into our next session.